Microsoft Project Server 2010 security is based on users, groups, and categories. Groups contain sets of users who need to access the same set of data in the same way. Categories provide access to projects and resources based on parameters that you define. There's a lot of documentation out there on Project Server security and it can get uh, confusing, but once you get the hang of it, uh, you can see the uh, power that is in the security that model. So for the for purpose of this video is not to go through every single detail of project server security but more to give you a walkthrough of how to, uh, to get things done and to um, get an overview of the security model. So anyone who is managing Microsoft server uh, security and users will need to have an administrative account. So log in as an administrator and click on the server settings link in the quick launch bar. So under sec the security section uh, you can manage users, groups, categories and other security related topics. Um, we'll start with managing users by clicking on the manage users link. Uh, here you can add new users, edit new users and deactivate users. Uh, to add a new user, simply click on the new user button. Uh, to edit a user, simply click on it, the name of the user. And to de deactivate a user, select the user by checking the box and then click deactivate users. So here we'll s start with creating a new user by clicking the new user button. Give the new user a name, email address, If you implemented the RBS feature, uh, you can select an RBS security group. Um, in this case, we'll just make Janice an engineer. Give her some initials. There's some other options that you have, giving a hyperlink name, uh, U, uh, URL as well, depending on the type of, of uh, security you have on the back end. Uh, we have an Active Directory back end, so we, we need to make sure that the account validates against it. And you can also prevent active directory synchronization if you choose to. In this case we don't want to do that. Other attributes that you can assign for this user are the whether or not this user can be leveled user's base calendar, uh, booking type, timesheet manager defines uh, who approves a user's timesheet. In this case we're going to make Janice her own timesheet manager. If you were to change this to another user, that user would be submitted Janice's timesheets for approval. And default assignment user and some other uh, options here. Standard rate which you can use in um, graphical indicators and other for other types of reasons. You can choose to synchro synchronize tasks with the Exchange server if you have that ch set up. Uh, resource departments, if you've filled out the departments table, you can see uh, the departments that you have filled out. And here you can add any security groups. Uh, these groups will define where this user has access to. For this case we're going to make Janice a team member and in the interest of this video we're going to add all categories. Now keep in mind when you add you need to set specific permissions for each of the categories. So in the permissions for my task um, dialog box Microsoft has made it easy with some security templates that are predefined which you can also customize and create new. When you hit apply, you can see that there are certain uh, security uh, options that are predefined for this user. But you need to do that for each category that you have set up for the user.
and next is, is to set global permissions for the user and this also has some predefined security templates as well select the security template that you want to use hit apply and you can see the predefined security options are set finally if you've set up a team name table and populated it you can also give this person a team and when you're done click save next let's take a look at managing groups in the server settings area click on the manage groups link under the security section here you can manage the default groups um, that are come out of the box or add new groups to add a new group simply click on the new group button uh, to delete a group you can select it and click the delete group button and you also have an active directory sync options button if you have enabled the active directory sync you can schedule um, this here so let's start with creating a new group click on the new group button here you can give it a new group and a description if you choose you can find a group that exists in Active Directory if you choose to but in this case we're just going to create a group out of users that exist in Microsoft Project Server in this instance and we'll add a couple of users here including Janice that we just created earlier and what a group we have you can also select the categories that this group uh, has access to. In this case, we'll add all. And similarly to adding a new user, you also need to set up security for each one of these categories. So it also comes with a uh, default permissions templates, um, which you can also create, which I'll show you later as well. But here we're just going to go ahead and make these all team members. So just like in the other example, you have to add security for each one of the categories. And when you're done, select the global permissions. Now this is uh, minimized by default. So you'll need to click on the plus sign next to the global permissions section, which expands this area. Here you can set global permissions and for now we'll choose team member and hit apply and when you're done with categories and the global permissions click the save button now let's take a look at managing categories uh, under the security section click on the manage categories link you can see that there are a few out-of-the-box categories here you can create a new category or delete categories by selecting and deleting click clicking the delete categories button it's not suggested to delete or edit the existing categories it's best to create a new one uh, let's create a new category for our purpose of our video by clicking the new category button Here you can give it an, uh, a name and a description if you choose the categories are a little bit different uh, here you can select the users and groups who have access to these these categories um, for now what we'll do is we'll add our new group that we just created phase 2 IT and you can set up the permissions set for that this group has in this category for now we'll choose team member hit apply You can also choose which specific projects that you have in the system that this category has access to as well. Or you can select all current and future projects in the server database. In this case, we're going to go ahead and do that. Some further security that you can add. You also have the ability 
to add specific resources and some specific permissions for them as well. And again, specific views that are available for this category. So for instance, a member of this category looking at the project view, you can define exactly which views are shown to this person or this group of people in, in this case. There's a lot of flexibility and power that you can see, uh, section off um, access to projects and areas of project server just by using the categories section. And once you're happy with your changes, you can go ahead and click the Save button. And now let's take a look at the Security Templates section by clicking on the Manage Security Templates link. Here are the default security templates that we've been seeing using in the system when we uh, set user permissions for categories and global permissions. So let's create a new template uh, by clicking on the New Template button. Uh, alternately, you can uh, delete templates as well. But as with uh, most of the uh, uh, groups, categories, it's best to not delete existing or out-of-the-box templates. It's best to create new ones. So let's go ahead and do that by clicking on the New Template button. Here you can give it a template name and a description if you choose. Now you can uh, copy it an existing template if you like. For this purpose we'll copy the administrator template and then edit that. Go ahead and say OK to this dialog. And you can go ahead and edit the template as you see fit. So here in this section is the category permissions template. And here is the global permissions template. In this case, we're going to leave everything as is. But you can allow, disallow, or specifically deny. And these options will be selected when you use them. So when you're done, go ahead and click the Save button. Now you can go back over to the Manage Groups section and edit the Phase 2 IT group. And here you can change the permissions. to the new security template that we just created. Keep in mind that you'll need to change the permissions on each one of these. And you can also see that there is now a new category called Phase 2. You can also change the global permissions to the new template that we just created. And alternately, you can do this on the user level as well. Now, in the Project Web App Permissions, you're able to choose which permissions are enabled for a user or administrator to, to choose when they're creating a new group, a category, or even defining specific permissions for a user. So, you, uh, by default, all of the permissions are enabled. So, that means that an administrator or anyone with uh, the ability to edit a user's um, permissions um, will be able to choose these options. If you were to diselect some of these options, they would be not they would not be available to choose. Um, but by default, most of the time, this is left uh, as is and not changed. And finally, you have the manage delegates link. Here, a program manager can manage the delegates that they have assigned to them. In this case, this user has no delegates assigned. And that's about it. Uh, we've shown you how to create a new user, create a new group, 
create a new category and a new security template which we've um, added the users the new our new user to a new group uh, assign that group to a new category and assign a specific custom security template to all three and one final addition to the security model that project server 2010 has available is the RBS or resource breakdown structure uh, and you may have seen the RBS field uh, when you're in a new user creation or editing of a new user um, and this resource breakdown structure is a hier hierarchical security structure typically based on the management reporting structure of your organization although it can be structured in other ways um, RBS can be an important element in your project server security model when it is used to define the reporting relationships among users and projects in your organization. Um, to define this uh, area, click on the Enterprise Custom Fields and Lookup Tables link under Enterprise Data in the Server Management area. And you can see this custom field called RBS. We're more concerned with the table that lies behind it. So if you scroll down to the lookup table section, you can see the RBS table. This by default comes blank. So as an organization, you need to define your RBS. So th typically the way it works is this is the highest level of security. Uh, this person can see everything. Uh, managers can see everything below. And engineers are at the bottom and you can define as many or as deep as you as you so choose so for instance if you were to go to a user you can set this user as an engineer and save and we can make Janice a manager and we'll make Jimi Hendrix the executive of the company which he already is so now you can see Jimi Hendrix can see everything below his executive status Janice can see everything below her status and at the bottom Brad Knoll doesn't see only sees what uh, he's supposed to so this adds an extra element of security to the uh, existing security groups and use uh, options that you have available. 